everybody and welcome to episode 4 of In The Group Chat. Today is probably going to be my best episode so far. Of course. Re reason being <laughs> is because the girl that's usually behind the camera is finally in front of the yes. camera. Um, the reason being, one, I was going to have you actually on an episode before we decided to do our little partnership. But um, Elsa's going to be co-hosting with me. Woohoo! Yeah, we've decided that we're going to do this together. Um, I think we had like a really good accidental run of this. Yeah, it was one of them ones where you were like, I was like, I can propose something to you. And you were like, I'm going to propose something it to you. And we both kind of said it. And it was like, oh my oh God. Oh my God, why didn't you say it before? <laughs> to be fair, I was thinking of this uh, probably from like when we did our trials. Because no we did, yeah, me and Elsa did, and Norik, who's behind the camera, he's going to be the next person now. <laughs> he's, um, we did a trial before episode one, and I was like, oh my days, like, this is so good, and it's so nice. I'm, like, I'm independent, but I love doing things with yeah. people, and I feel like we work so well together. Honestly. Honestly, it's been literally a dream. I thought this, there was going to be so many hurdles that we're going to have to, like, go over. Literally. But... It's been like plain sailing, thank God. There's not been one sort of issue that we've been like, yeah. I don't really like that. The yeah. What you're doing, but it's like, literally just been like, okay, cool. Yeah. And it's just worked out so smoothly. It's so mad how this has literally happened. I but know. anyway, enough of all that. She's going to do most of the talking herself because, <laughs> you know. Um, you've been with me, like, like I said, throughout this whole journey. And as you know, I like to introduce all my guests yeah. by getting to the nitty gritty of them. But before we do that, please introduce yourself to my guests. Our guests. <laughs> so I'm Elsa, and I'm now one of the co-hosts of in the group <laughs> chat, which I'm really excited about. Um, it's gonna be really fun. As you know, I've been behind the cameras, not really in front of the camera, so this is gonna be a bit new to me. But we'll get then. I'll probably look at this video in like two years' time and just laugh at myself. Oh yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, I was born in London, raised in London. Um, currently I'm doing mentoring for businesses, entrepreneurs, startups, and I want to get into life coaching as well. I've been really, really enjoying it. And it's basically helping and advising people who are either working, you know, as an entrepreneur or they've started up a business and they don't really know how to actually make the next steps forward. So they've got that framework there, but they don't actually know what to do. So there's so many people like that that have so many ideas but then they get to and they're like oh this oh that i don't actually know how to do this or that yeah. and that's where i step in where i help you you know create your step-by-step -step goal give you you know um actual dates where you're going to get that done by how you're going to get it done by and i'll ad adapt it all to you so it makes sense for you and mm -hmm. there's no pressure there's no timeline any not, I mean as in like a strict Yeah, you're timeline. not going to like say you've got detention. If exactly. You don't do it. I yeah. adapt it to you and what you're comfortable mm -hmm. with and what you're confident with. Um, I also help anyone who's looking to be an entrepreneur as well. So there's so many people, especially from the pandemic, where people are starting to realise, you know, that they can actually move their idea into something more yeah. than just the idea, but they don't actually know how to get there. So that's where I step in to, you know, really help you with that sort of more boring stuff. Because um, a lot of entrepreneurs are actual actually creators yeah. where they'll have an idea or they'll have, you know, something that they want to move forward with, but it, they don't really understand the other Business, the logistics, yeah, the logistics, it. operations. I was like, that was that's basically kind of like what happened with us. We've yeah. been friends for quite a long time. Years now. I, can't um, I don't even know how many years. It's been like seven years. More than that, more, really. Like beginning, like mid uni. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm not saying our age. But <laughs> yeah, we've been friends for a long time, and honestly, the pandemic was the. The time where, you know when like look, you see loads of people, everyone was either working out, yeah. doing startups. Making banana breads. Honest, yeah. <laughs> I probably felt the laziest during my during that period mm. in the sense of, I was going into work because yeah. my, my job role required, um, it was a customer service based role, so I had to be in work every single day. But I felt like I wasn't doing anything new. And this is where my kind of like in the group chat before we, before yeah. we called it that um, kind of sparked. I knew I always needed to be like in it, you know, not the entertainment industry where it, came, where it comes to singing and dancing and all that. I just knew that I had a voice and I swear to you, during the pandemic, I have never watched so many interviews, podcasts, yeah. news in my life. And I thought, there's more to this it. is yeah, like, there's I more can to it. do this. And why is no one saying or asking the questions that I want to know mm. or giving the answers that I want to give? And then literally... Was it January or December? 
that we had. I think it was, it was like, a, it was before Christmas because I remember was, we met after yeah. Christmas. It was like maybe de- late, early December, late November. And yeah. we kind of like were, we were just out with friends and we were talking about, as you do when you get older, life, all that good stuff. And I was like basically just expressing my, uh, you know, when you think it's a dream in yeah. the moment. And Elsa was just like, well, let's have a meeting then, what's going on? Like, Yeah, because I remember you saying all this and then I remember uh, my boyfriend, Norik, saying, oh, Elsa can help you with yeah. this. And then in oh, my yeah. head, I was like, oh my God, I don't, I don't know. Like, about podcasts. Yeah, I don't know. But then I was like, wait, actually, it's the same aspect if you think about it. It's just, you know, it's an event, but in a digital way. So, yeah. you know, it, it has the same aspects as any other business. So, yeah. so right then, let's meet and figure out what it is you want to do and get it done. Yeah, we met in January and the rest is history yeah i know you're on episode four now i know and now look at this new change i know <laughs> who would have thought amazing. i would have be on a uh, co-host in the podcast yeah because i can't lie to you guys when i my first interaction with elza it was like a night out she we knew about each other guys and the first time i ever met her i slept around her house i was like basically um because yeah her cousin is like we i grew up with yeah yeah and i was like, i'll just come sleep around elza's house and i was like okay and then i thought she didn't like me <laughs> You're literally like the hundredth per- person to say this to me, and I just, do you know what? I do understand it, but I don't understand it because when they say, "Oh, I literally thought you were an absolute bitch," I'm like, "What? Yeah. I don't even, I don't even know my face does." I that. even forget that I had that perception of you because obviously, yeah. like it's been years. But yeah, I thought she didn't like me. Look at us now, <laughs> bum chums. <laughs> I have to actually like subconsciously make an effort to be like, right? Do I look really moody right now? Do I need to just stay like this? Yeah, but now it looks like you've got frozen yeah, Botox. No. <laughs> it's, really, it's really weird. I'm like, this is not natural. How do people appear just smiley? I know, but we look, we're going to get it cracking. Like. I know, I, especially now I'm on camera. I have to be like... Yeah, show some teeth. Mm. 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 <laughs> not right now, no. Anyway, <laughs> I, I know, but I want everyone else to know. What, what shaped you? What framed you? Your younger years? Like, you know the lifestyle and the way we were brought up? Yeah. I feel like a lot of people can relate. Yeah. But tell me, like, your pre-teens, a little My bit about that. Ooh. What what kind of catapulted or what was the little seed that kind of made you who you are today? So, a little bit about me. Like, I have uh, multiple things that I enjoy, multiple things that I do. I'm never that type of person that just has, like, one job or one interest. Like, I have multiple interests. I saw this interview once. I can't remember who said this, but she was like, I'm not great at anything. I'm just good at a lot of different things. And I've over the years had to come to understand that you know you don't have to be excellent at something i just enjoyed so many things Mm so when i was when i was at school i liked majority of my subjects some i disliked but that was all right some i really enjoyed and others that i wasn't good at like maths i was i wanted to be really good at just because i was so like maths is amazing i just really wanted to be good at it um so being very curious about so many different things has really made me uh, open-minded. It's really made me um, look into opinions. I love understanding why people think a certain way. My parents are from a different culture, were, came to London obviously as immigrants. Um, I was born here, so being raised in London, and I'm sure a lot of people can relate to this, where their parents are from a different country and then they have to adapt to the England lifestyle um, and, you know, th- my parents have three daughters, so I have two other sisters. So us growing up here, you have to adapt to both. It's yeah. like you have two personalities. Yeah. One when you're at home with that culture and one when you're at school and out and about. So it was that big adaptation of, you know, who actually am I kind of thing. Because you have to adapt to what they kind of think is good for you and then what you think yeah. is good for you. So from that, um, I've developed a very like curious why does my dad think like this why does my mom think like this and it'd never be like oh my god you're wrong why do you th- why are you saying that i would literally think deep down yeah. why does this person think like this where is it stem from and then i would understand like oh, okay cool and it used to really frustrate me if i didn't get it so maths because i knew there was one right answer it yeah. would really frustrate me that i wouldn't get it because i'm like there is no thinking about this no, there's no other opinion it's just that so why can't like, i yeah. that's it. why can't i get it yeah. but i think that for me it was one of my main things that has like kind of built me to this person that i am now where i'm very i, I, I you have the i, I want to like step mean. into everything yeah <laughs> because 
be one being an Im- immigrant, mm. two being the oldest child. Yeah, definitely. You have being the oldest to child be is... a chameleon in yeah. so many different environments because you have to adapt. Yeah. And you're basically you you kind of have to grow up a little bit quicker than usual. For sure, I break certain had. barriers. Yeah. Because I'm pretty sure it's so much easier. Like I'm the oldest. We mm. usually have like the same kind of yeah. story. It's the same in that sense. So break those barriers. Understand why your parents maybe like feel a little bit secluded with. When you're in school, you feel like everyone is the same, and then when you're at home, you kind of can half relate, yeah, half to, not. Yeah, but you know what's really weird? Because you never, because when you're like going to school, going back home, etc., you're not really thinking about it, like the transition you have to make. Mm. But you just automatically kind of like mold back into that transition. Yeah. So oh, then, yeah. when you meet people from the same culture or from the same area as you, you're like, oh my god, you understand my world. So yeah. it's really nice to be able to meet some people who yeah. are in a similar boat to you. Did. So, because of that, do you think that's maybe um, made you a little bit more curious about the type of work you want to get into instead of the mainstream 9 to 5? Yeah. Did something happen maybe while you were at work or like, were you, did you just know like, I, I can't work for someone yeah. or did it limit like your creativity? How, how did that come about? I mean, for me, it's being curious, uh, I can't even speak curious <laughs> and in that aspect of being very like wanting to know everything and very um I'm, i was very hard-headed if i wanted to do something i i did it like my mum and dad would call me really stubborn for it but i think it's really helped me to where i've come now where mm-hmm. like i will set myself like a, a goal and i have to do it but there's good and bad with that because yeah. the good thing is is you get your shit done but the bad thing is that you drive yourself crazy if you don't do it yeah. so i've really had to like calm myself down to you know understand that there are certain things that won't go the way you've planned it there are certain things that the world is telling you stop this not for you and i've had to really understand that but previously i used to drive myself crazy but my dad's a business owner and when he came to london with he was with just my mom they knew no one you know your typical sort of story where they really really had to work hard and strive for everything that they have now and it's actually incredible to when you think about our parents stories it's actually incredible how much they've gone through been through had they didn't even have time to sit down and yeah. understand their emotion and have that transition period of not knowing it was anything, survival mode from honestly, day one yeah. and the amount of like like different jobs he had to do mm-hmm. just to get himself to where he is now but he came here and said to everyone he was around and people used to laugh at him he's like, i'm gonna be a millionaire i'm gonna have this kind of business i'm gonna do this i'm gonna do that they used to laugh at him but he knew about manifestation he, before honestly he was he's <laughs> like a king of manifestation it's crazy because he always would say to me if you wake up in the morning and you say to yourself i'm gonna have a, the best day ever what's going to happen you set yourself up with the right mentality if you wake up and you're like telling yourself i'm going to have a heart attack or something it's It's going to happen because you've made it like implemented into your brain so much that you've literally told your brain to do that Mm -hmm. and it's going to work with your organs in order to to get that done so for me i've forgotten your bloody question like you know the whole mainstream way of working because the way you grew up because you know how you were saying about immigration right it's so true like I I don't know where I was watching um, an an interview and someone was saying how immigrants are like, they have like the aggression for like work and stuff like that. Yeah, they were hard work. Yeah, but one thing I've noticed as well is when we, when my parents came here as well, when they Mm. like speak about it, it was survival mode from day one and we're super, super good at like seeking, not being scared to go somewhere for a better opportunity. So like my parents as well, the number one thing they said was like, education for my daughters mm. better life i don't know how we're gonna do it but we're gonna do it and honestly it's like a movie when they explain yeah, how we I came know, here what so we cool. had to do like i love hearing about it it is insane so i think that's why as well like my dad he also said i i can't work for anyone not yeah, because I'm, yeah. I'm i'm not in a disrespectful way it's just i need to it's not for everyone it's not for everyone yeah. and i just think we have that type of hunger that is literally just embedded in our roots and then when we're like first generation mm. it's kind of like we have that and then we also have the more even more opportunities because they've created the opportunities exactly. for themselves yeah. whereas for us everything has been so much more advanced and we're on a different playing field to that to what they were when yeah. they came here so it's just like do i now stick to a mainstream or especially like what's been happening in the pandemic as well yeah 
the amount of new um, jobs that have been registered as well is insane. Honestly, like, but you know, also I was reading because it's so interesting that you talk about that with the pandemic. It's been obviously a very crap time for yeah, everyone, yeah, of but course. so many companies have shut down, but mm -hmm. so many new companies yeah. have been registered. It's been the most that has ever been registered on the government website. Yeah. It's actually insane. And it's because people had no choice but to do something. They yeah. couldn't go get a job because there weren't many out there. So they literally had to be creative and think about what the hell they can do. And people have now found out that there's so many different ways that you can yeah. make money and it doesn't have to be a nine to five and it doesn't have to be through one you know source of income yeah, yeah you can do multiple things and get money from multiple things yeah. on your laptop wherever you are in the world it's actually loads crazy. of people started like trading as well during yeah that time trading so drop shipping yeah um the amount of do you know how many masks were being sold on etsy it was the most sold product on etsy or something like that i can't remember like it was in the millions of like how there much was money this they were girl making. as well you know how obviously like you couldn't be in close contact with people mm. so obviously like if you have a party they live together whatever this other girl was selling a certain product that made her like over 10k a month just because she literally bought, bought and sold it on Amazon. Like exactly. People became super creative. And she was a doctor. She was making more money doing that exactly. than in her profession. Yeah, that's the what you're saying as well. Like, when you are in survival mode, you have no other choice but to get out of your comfort zone, do what you need to do, and literally just go for it. Because a lot of time where, say if you have a job and you're, like, looking for another job, you never really get your CV done properly. You yeah, never really go looking because you're comfortable. You mm -hmm. know, you're not really happy where you are, but you're comfortable. You've got money coming in. You know your routine. But when you don't have a job and you've got your rent to pay and you're literally running out of your savings and, you know, your parents yeah. are like, you find what's going on? Yeah. There is no other, like, you don't have a choice but to do something about yeah. it. So it's actually crazy how much you can do when your brain thinks that... There's you, no other route. Yeah, there's no other route. You need yeah. to do something about it. So definitely, and I really, really, I'm enjoying the fact that people can work for themselves and that they're having a bit of quality of life as well. So it's been really. I was nice gonna ask to you. Do you think, that. if like from your experience, because obviously you've had to work from home for quite a while. Yeah. Do you think that it is better work-life balance? Like, do you think the pros outweigh the cons in terms do of working from home? Do you know what it is? Home? Everyone's different. Yeah. Because there's so many industries that you cannot work from home, and there that are. Doesn't. Yeah. Yes. For instance, banking yeah. industry forty is the highest percentage um, of where people had to be in the office so I will have to be all the time except the hours were shortened but like you know like tech industry mm, and stuff like yeah. that there's what they weren't even going in at all I know because there's no need Do you know how much money yeah. companies are saying yeah. because they don't need to yeah. hire our offices but anymore. personally for you what were like your do you know what it is? What your pros? I the pros are you definitely work more because you don't have much distractions and you know you're being monitored. I don't know some companies monitor while you're still working, some don't. But you do get the work done quicker so that you can just go do whatever it, it mm. is you need to do. Um, you have more time for yourself. You have more time with your family. You have more time to you know do things and you don't have to like finish work at six and then by the time you get home seven by the time you cook yeah. eight nine like your e whole evening's gone so it's ridiculous i can see the pros and cons to both of it for me i would enjoy working from home but i would personally like rent out a co-working space so that i can work in my own time but not always from home because i really do like to kind of have my home to be comfortable in and then not mix it as well yeah like, sometimes you can get confused especially like with some people who are work in their room mm. it's a bit like it could literally. be very like it could be like soli solitary confinement for Honestly, some people it's bad. you work you chill you eat like it's it could be a nightmare yeah. but i get what you mean like from what i've heard from a lot of people as well they think the balance um is the best thing yeah Maybe going exactly. in once or twice and then like working from home because yeah. i feel like a lot of people have said to me as well they've realized that the time the nine to five they don't need all that time to do the work that they need to get done not at all oh my god you know you're saving you money you on transport, transport and you're like what am i doing now like it's just it's mad yeah and the, the thing is the employees are, made, are saving money and so is the employer so it's fine but there are certain industries that you literally can't and sometimes you do need yeah. to go in so i do understand that but um there's but a like, lot of like sorry um, i was gonna ask like you know how for example because you What's your what's the name of your job role again? You have to go in sometimes, right, to like view places. Yeah, so I've been I've been um, working at my dad's company. Um, so I'm a business manager there, and which obviously relates to me doing the business uh, mentoring as well. So what I do is I make sure that the business is running finally. We've got enough projects coming in. Um, I bring in new ideas um, on how to you know get 
to where we want to be, um, the monthly reflections on, you know, have we been moving at the pace we need to be moving and what else can we do to, you know, brighten, uh, yeah. yeah, to prosper and to do better. Um, but with me, because I, obviously I had the advantage of it being my dad's company, yeah. um, I can work how I like kind of thing. So I'll go in when I need to go in sometimes because I really and truly I do not need to go in because I everything I can do I do on my yeah. laptop but I don't want to be home all the time just because I'm not of, I need to move yeah, I need to, I'm like, like that yeah like I don't feel really productive because I'm, when I'm at home I just realize that I eat less and I like I do my work but I don't have a balance if that makes sense because when you're at work you're like right this is my lunch time and you go eat kind of thing at home I'm just kind of like it's gone past 12, 1, and I'm like, I just want to get it all done so then I can just chill mm -hmm. for the rest of the day. But actually, you know, that's not really... This is actually quite, like, a good um, conversation because what I want, like, whoever's watching this, if you can, like, comment as well below... Yeah, see what, what, what you prefer. What's your preference? Because I was watching... Um, I'm sure everyone knows the diary of a CEO with mm -hmm. Stephen Butler. He had a guest called Malcolm Gladwell on there. He's, like, this really good speaker, author, writer, etc. And his whole thing was that working from home is the worst idea. He was like, oh, there's like, like a work ethic, you, um, you're not part of anything. And then I decided to go on the yeah. comments, right? And there were so many people that disagreed with what he was saying. And they were saying um, that I've been working in a Fortune 500 company for the last 12 years and I've never ever felt like I was part of a team. Oh um, my God, that's so true though. And I don't see why, I don't understand how people can say it's the worst idea ever. Like that's an opinion. You can't state yeah. that as if it's a fact. Yeah, like, you know, everyone's different. Yeah. Like you can't, that, you can't make that factual. It's just yeah. different for everyone. But from a company's perspective, I can see why it is difficult for them to have people working from home because they can't see what they're doing. Mm -hmm. They need to like know what they're doing and they feel like if they see them, they're more in like charge of them. Whereas when yeah. you're all at home, if, if you don't get like an email from them in some time, you're like, what are they doing kind of thing. So I can see from a company's perspective why they would prefer people to be in. But again, it just depends on what kind of company you are. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, I, like you said, it's different for everyone. Yeah, but yeah like comment guys what you guys think how it's been for you guys if you prefer working from home if you prefer the balance between both or literally just going into the office yeah. every day i feel like with me because my work was so close i loved going in it was great i preferred yeah. it I, i'm quite a face-to-face -face person anyway. you had a nice team though as I well did. like that That's, does really matter honestly, if you don't yeah. enjoy your teammates yeah. then you really I don't know, I, I would prefer to work from home because, oh my god, imagine, it's like going into that class at school where, you know, you just yeah. had no friends you, in, you literally and when they told you to partner up, you're like, oh my god, please make it quick. And you hope for the teacher to partner you up instead of saying, oh, yeah. you can choose your Yeah, because you're going to be left out, it's like a dodgeball. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, also, I wanted to know, like, because of, I know, like, how much of a hard worker you are and, like, how, like, how many things you juggle, but what are the main maybe core aspects that you, or your attributes that push you to be this way that you are because you are quite independent yeah. you are quite disciplined and you a lot of the time you're quite motivated so what core values bring these kind of like attributes out of you so like other people can maybe just I don't yeah know, i mean the on. core values i feel like they do change over time because you start to understand yourself better yeah. um one of them is understanding myself mm -hmm. i feel like that's become self-awareness yeah self-awareness being really understanding of who you are and a lot of times especially when you're younger you tend to like Look, kind of not fault yourself at anything you're like no they did wrong no this no that but actually if you step back and you figure out what happened where did you go wrong what could you have done better what did you do well then i feel like the next time you do this something similar you will do better mm -hmm. and i've become very um self-aware in the ways that i work the do you like feel like you receive um criticism or feedback better now as you're older honestly i prefer it to like people yeah. telling me like compliments yeah. even though obviously it's great to have yeah, a compliment and you you know because you've there's a thing as well when you do so many different things you forget to like uh congratulate yourself as well and be proud of those big those moments that you kind of like meh kind yeah, of thing yeah. but with the criticism honestly like before i used to hate it so Same. much i'm like oh my god i'm like yeah. I, I thought i was doing well blah 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 yeah. like especially at my first job when um 
my boss would tell me like you know you need to do this better you need to do this better i'd be like oh my god he doesn't like me i'm, yeah. I'm gonna like i'm gonna get sad blah 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 but honestly it's the best thing especially when it becomes spiteful then you know of course no yeah, like that's it no but when it's constructive feedback mm -hmm. then you need to take it because that's how you're being perceived and you cannot see yourself the way other yeah. people see you so it's so important to yeah. actually listen to what people are saying um, it's like that guy who, uh, the founder of Gymshark, he did yeah. a thing where he basically like gave all his employees um, a feedback form for his performance as a manager or a boss mm. and then all the negative comments that he got, he was like, no, there's no way yeah. and everything and then his girlfriend was like, no, your shit literally awkward. this is exactly what you like. They say that about, um, is it Bill Gates as well? I'm not sure. Who's the, um, that's the Apple guy, yeah? <laughs> not Bill Gates, that's Microsoft, fucking hell. <laughs> Steve Jobs. Yeah. They said that about him, you know. Oh, is it? He had to actually work in a completely different part away from his that's employers. That's what he done as well, Ben Francis. He said that he stepped down from being a CEO of his own company because he took I can't that. believe I just said that, sorry. That was such a <laughs> stupid moment for me. You need to I'm so sorry. <laughs> that was really bad. They're all billionaires, man. Same shit. Oh, one cause. of them. <laughs> <laughs> I just thought you were talking and I was like, I need to really, really like, sorry. Oh yeah. God. Anyways, um, so he actually stepped down for being CEO, CEO from his own company so that he, because he felt that he wasn't ready to actually take his company where it needs to go and he didn't feel um, experienced enough to be the CEO. So then he went into every single department of his own company to master it, to understand it and to understand his team members. So then when he felt ready, he went back to being a CEO. And that is number one self-awareness because yeah. if you, for example, have a company or you're doing uh, something for yourself where you're working for yourself, you need to understand that whatever actions that you do, you cannot take personally and you cannot make the decision based on just you. Mm -hmm. This company, oh, this everything 100%. is a separate thing and you need to figure out what's best for that. And that's kind of like one of the disadvantages of working with friends. Well, yeah. but um, you do really need to act like pretend it's like your baby. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. what's best for the baby yeah. rather than putting personal issues 100%. into it. Yeah. Oh, of course, because at the end of the day, like success and like happiness is the main, well, it is my main mm. um, goal. So I feel like to be able to achieve that i might not like what i'm hearing but listen i'm gonna put that shit to the side exactly and i gotta keep it moving yeah so self-awareness what else would you uh, say my other one is respect others respect yourself as well um there's In so many every times, yeah. walks of life respect yeah. is literally and it's crazy because like if you go and speak to anyone in like a disrespectful way whatever that person might know someone who knows someone who knows someone that will lead back to, oh, Elsa's not nice, she said yeah, this to me. Yeah. If you're not being respectful to everyone around you, no matter who they are, then I don't know, I don't want to know you, to be honest. It's true. It's like, you know, for example, if you go to like someone who's filthy rich and they're nice to everyone, you want to be friends with them, Yeah. you know, but someone who looks down on someone, nope. But also you need to respect yourself. Everything that you do, you need to understand that you're doing it for the future of yourself. So, for example, if you've had a mad, crazy night out and then you go home and you're like, I really can't be bothered to, like... Or you go to sleep and you wake up in the morning and you're like, I can't bother to clean my room, blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. But then you think about, actually, my... <laughs> it's okay. Edit that out. <laughs> Myself tomorrow. I'm seeing all of this tomorrow. <laughs> My future self of tomorrow will really appreciate that I've actually done that and you're doing it for yourself. Yeah. And that's what sometimes I've used to forget that like, I'd come home after work and then do more work and be like, oh, I can't be bothered, blah, blah, blah. Like, I'm doing this for myself. Like, yeah. I need to respect myself because if this was another task from a job oh, from you a different done, company, yeah. you do it because mm -hmm. you know you you know you might get sacked. But where's the respect for yourself? Why would you not do it for yourself? If you're going to do it for someone else, sit down there, do the work yeah. because the future of yourself well thank you well thank you and literally yeah yeah you'll be like oh, this is why i'm a millionaire now yeah so i'm a billionaire exactly because i literally got my shit done no it's true so self-awareness respect and trusting your uh, gut honestly i can't there's so many times where i'll do something it's the one thing that you can't explain on paper yeah. why you feel why it makes you feel like that but nine times out of ten it literally yeah. gets you out of shit it really does and it just helps you understand because do you know what i 
it's hard to explain but you know how i explain it i'm talking about in a work sense so for example when you're a child what is it that you really like there's something in deep inside you that you know that you always wanted to kind of do it might not be a job necessarily but something that you loved doing so for instance if it's like i animals or whatever mm -hmm. and you grow up with this kind of like fascination of like being a vet like caring for animals but then you're kind of like oh but that you know that's not for me i can't do that that's hard that's this that's that you're pushing down that dream that's in your gut but then you're pursuing something else yeah. because you think it's easier but actually if you're passionate about something and you love it and your gut's kind of telling you i really want to do it plus the you know education whatever it is you need to do for yeah. it two and two together what's that going to equal more than yeah. you know you doing something just because you think it's easy people always say like oh that's going to take five years it's going to take six years in so six what? years you're going to be that age yeah anyway. exactly so you either do it or you don't exactly and you'll look back and you say oh i could have done that six years just went by or five years just went by yeah. why didn't i do it and do you know what it is as well it's like oh but it takes six years or whatever but then you're going to go do another job you don't really like and it's going to feel years. like 60 years yeah and then you'll do that for six years you'll be like well, what have i done until yeah. now like could I, could I actually done something that i wanted to do yeah there was a study about like um this nurse that went around to a care home and literally like these people were like basically on their deathbed oh yeah and she was seen this yeah one. and she was just saying like what do, what would you tell your younger self and like people were saying do like follow your dreams maybe uh like uh, keep relationships with your uh like friends and stuff like that don't lose contact yeah. with people but she literally when she said the thing about follow your dreams i feel like everyone says that and i know it kind of like it's there's a reason they're it. saying yeah. it there's lack of reason they're saying it and i feel like when you love the thing that you do it's gonna make you successful and it's gonna make you happy you hope so anyway but yeah i mean obviously a dream means different to eric to, to of so course but like you know the thing that you think is not it's, it's not, impossible yeah. to be a reality it's really hard like i i swear to you do you remember the first time we came here it took us bloody 20 <laughs> years just to <laughs> fix this yeah. we didn't have a clue yeah honestly I, I thought we'd just come in here and like magic happens and the fairies just connect <laughs> everything and it's all done like absolutely and now we're later and we're like oh my god this is how it works i was yeah i was like oh nah we'll be here we'll be fine for an hour three hours later honestly. we had finally like done everything done our little takes and honestly it was the best thing ever it was it was just a trial run but i felt I'm, so I really amazing enjoyed that conversation it was great it, flowed, it was like, really great yeah it was what really did we even talk about kind of like this stuff yeah and obviously i interviewed norik he was absolutely great as well <laughs> he loved it i know he's always like that when he i remember we had to do this like photo shoot one day because we had um it was something for work and then um my friend sarah was taking photos of us and then he's like no i don't want to do it i don't want to do it as soon as she started taking the photos he's like oh another one like this like, mm. like this i was like okay all right my door all right <laughs> <laughs> oh my god no do you know what yeah it's, it's <laughs> Guys, he's posing behind the camera. <laughs> True, to switch it around to you. It's <laughs> good to even talk. I know, it's okay. Um, what was I going to say? Oh, yeah, what's... Because I know it sounds all like glitz and glam and like make money and blah, blah, blah. But like being an entrepreneur is not easy, like I'm pretty sure in the beginning. I mean, this doesn't make money in the beginning and it's still classed as like entrepreneur. Do you know what it is? Ever. Every single entrepreneur doesn't have a freaking clue on what they're doing. And I promise you now, even like, um, okay, I can't speak for... Yeah, the ones that have made it, but like... But even then, for example, because they've done one thing, they're like, okay, what's, what's the next thing? What do I do this? What do I do that? Obviously, when you've made... Uh, like I said, I can't speak for them up there, but like, everyone, especially who's starting out, does not know what the hell they're doing. If they've got... Ooh, did that mess it up? If they've got an Instagram page, Facebook page, they're all over LinkedIn, it looks glitz and glam, but I promise you now, they probably have about three people who don't even know what they're doing. And it's so, so normal because it's such a new thing. You're not expected to know everything about everything. You know, you're going to have the bumps, you're going to have the, what am I doing? Oh my God, is this right? Should I be doing this? Blah, blah, blah. Like, and it just, the thing is, it's so e I'm going to stop. <laughs> It's just break it. I was like, it's fine. <laughs> no, you hear my voice. Um, <laughs> it's so easy for companies to be perceived like this top ass. Yeah. Like I know what we're, I, you know, we know what we're doing. We're this top, blah blah blah. But really and truly, no one knows what they're doing. Yeah. They're just taking it as it goes. So, if you feel like you have an idea, you know roughly how to get there. You, 
you have the time for it, go and do it. Because yeah. if that person over there can do it, why the hell can't you do it? It's so true. Is that why, like, you... Is that what you've always kind of envisioned for yourself to be... Uh, fin- the ind- having that independence is... Has the finance side also like been linked to that? Has have you thought? Um, oh, because being yeah. an entrepreneur, it looks it's a, bo- a bit more appealing to you because you know the financial freedom that could possibly come with it. Because I feel like with a nine to five, you're kind of like working to survive, or you're survive. What is it like? What do people say? I feel like in England, you're working, you're working to live, no. to survive. You're not living to work. Or whichever bloody way is meant you're to living, be. You're living. You're living to work. Yeah, yeah. that's it. You're yeah, living. Yeah, you're, yeah. you're literally <laughs> living to work. Yeah. But I feel like with being an entrepreneur, there is no stop. There's no like. There's not shut off time. There's. But you're doing what you love, both. and a lot. Yeah. Of, a lot of people say it doesn't feel like work. So I don't know. Yeah, I mean, there's pros and cons to both because when you're working for yourself, there are so many like work doesn't stop. You'll be literally like in a cafe with your friends and mm. then there's something you have to sort out like yeah. there, there is no other person to deal with it so you, you have to understand that that does come with it and you need to love this thing so much that even when you know you're out with your friends you have you have to do it mm-hmm. kind of thing with the nine to five personally is for, not for me i don't like being tied in rules like i like to if you've given me a task and a deadline i'll get it done for you just don't tell me how to do it. Like, yeah. stop telling me what kind of room I need to stay in. Don't tell me, like, oh, yeah. I have to take break here. Then this, Like, I, I will do it. Just let me do it kind of thing. Yeah. But I've slowly kind of realised that it's not for me. It's not fair to the employer or to me. But it is for some people. They like to be told how to do things, where to do it kind of thing. Like, yeah. they like that. So it's good for people. And it's good for business owners, you know, to employ people. Yeah, of course. But for me personally i don't i like to be independent i like to do things the way i want to do it and i really enjoy like coming up with the ideas Yourself. myself as well and I, I really do kind of um what's the word admire um the like way of my leadership and management skills of a team i really do like i feel like i'm really picking myself up here good but, you should um the way i work with people I feel like I wish I had managers that dealt with me in this way, mm. but that's why it was good that I had previous, you know, experience with 100%, other managers. hundred percent, yeah. Because I saw like you're not listening to the person and you're not working with them. You're telling them what to do, and that's it, kind of thing. Whereas I've kind of learned now. Everyone has a different learning technique. Everyone listens differently. Everyone um, does their work in different ways. So I will give you. The, I will understand that about you. I'll. Un- I will ask you. How do you like to be? Yeah, she did that with me as well, guys. I was shocked that that was even yeah, a question. Yeah, how do you like to be given feedback? How yeah. do you like to be complimented? Some people don't like certain yeah. words. Some people prefer you to be... St- oh, my God. Straight uh, up front and, um, like, you got yeah, to do this to, to be this. stern. Some people prefer when you're kinder to them. So it's so important with whoever you work with to understand them before you give them work mm. to do. Because if you really want them to do the best work that they can do, give them the comfort and the space and the you know the the needs to do it and to get it there and i promise you you will not have any problems and you you will succeed more with your team in that way because you actually take the time to care and cater to this person because at the end of the day if they're gone you're losing out it's true they're losing out too but in the run long run like you you have to retrain someone refine someone blah 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 it just takes a long time but yeah a bit of um I don't know if it's like a not a hard question because I feel like everyone would know this the answer to this in the back of their mind. Um, if there was one thing that you knew that you wouldn't fail at, but like, what would it be? Like, what would you do? What's the thing that that you would go for? Like, if you knew you would not fail at all. It's like one of the questions because I kind of ask this around to people. Um, what would you do if happiness paid you? So forget oh. money. If if making you happy pays you, oh, what would you do? And obviously, a lot of people are like, oh, I got an holiday, blah, blah blah. But like, you can't do that all your life. Um, honestly, what I'd do is I would write, travel, um, and take fo- uh, photography. There's business mentoring and life coaching. I love to the core. Like, I'm so happy that I found this for myself. Yeah. Because I kid you not, I've struggled a long way to understand what I like doing and it's been very, very difficult to kind of like get to this point at where I am. But in t- regards to like knowing where I want to be. Your, your, like pressure on yourself to do that as well because I was watching this like, um, 
I don't know if you, like most of you guys probably know who Gary V is. He was like to this, he was talking to this um, 27 year old and he literally just said to him, oh, how old are you? And the guy was like 27. He was like, you could literally do something for three years, stop, not, not have achieved shit and you're still young as fuck to carry on and do it because mm. we've got time on our side. As long as you do something that you love, then I feel like that's when the happiness side as well, like, yeah, I comes mean, this is the it. thing as well. Some people work to just make money. Some mm-hmm. people, like myself, oh, work yeah. because I, I, I want to, like, enjoy what I'm doing. I hate doing something that I don't have a passion in and yeah. I don't feel like I'm aiding. Especially if you're going to spend that. so much time doing that. Exactly, that's the thing. But that's cool. If you just want to work because you want to make money, that's, you know, you do you. But for me personally, I love to do, you know, I love to love my work. So. Yeah. I would travel, I would write and blog um, about where I'm traveling, about what I'm seeing to like let people know all these different like hidden places, cultures. Um, I would do photography and I would do this life coaching stuff. But also I would, um, my dream is to start a nonprofit organization where I'm um, creating basically education in a non-mainstream way into different countries and areas that don't have a lot of privileges in the education system where i'm from they don't really have that it's kind of like it's just exams if you're shit at exams and then you know there's not yeah. really anywhere you can go if you don't know anyone there's not really any, any way you can go and there's so many you know so much can be prevented if someone children had a person who cared about their education yeah. and i really want to be able to provide that for children in so many different areas where they have like a non uh non mainstream like certificate where they can basically have it's that still and valid then, to get into yeah, work. yeah but it's not like exams it's like yeah. let's work with you like practical yeah or training them for different types of jobs that they can actually kind of do like an apprenticeship thing, yeah an but apprentice like, but like in where i'm from they don't, they don't really do have that, that. No. so you know it'd be, i'd love to do that to build schools to build gyms to be able to get these kids off the street and actually doing something mm. they feel confident in and they can grow up in and like you know that can lead to them having a really successful life rather than turning into like crap because i really do feel like whatever you do as a child does mold you into oh you one are. million percent yeah, but it's like the beginning of this conversation when i asked you like what were the first things in your pre-teens mm. that made you who you are today that is going to be the same for everyone else it does stick with you whether it's good or bad so yeah, yeah I totally sure. agree. And I think that'll be like a sick thing. And oh, I honestly, I I will die a happy woman. If yeah. I hear one person say to me, "Thank you so much. You've helped me so much." That's for it, sure. I'm done. <laughs> you got this, girl. You will do it. And Thank even you. for like in the group chat, I am so happy to start like this new relationship. I'm so with happy. You. I'm so excited as well. Honestly, it's, gonna be sick. it's so it's so weird how we like even even though I thought in the beginning um, that I really wanted you to like be in front of the camera as well. I could tell like that you're quite like you, you not nervous but like you're just oh I don't know how I'm gonna be how yeah. am I gonna look whatever and then we had this podcast with these other guys that invited yeah. us onto theirs um shout out to that bio show uh we're guys yeah we're gonna have them on <laughs> soon yeah um and when I watched it back it was so good and I thought oh my god like why are we not doing this yeah I know it, was, it when, was so good it was when one of them was like oh you actually have quite a few opinions yeah like you and you have a very good speaking voice like you're very so i think it's just no yeah i I love hearing about different opinions i like asking people different questions and kind of like nitpicking at you know why is it you actually think like that yeah so i feel like it'll be and i feel like you do it like in a bit of a calmer way than me because sometimes i'm gonna be like "Ah." (laughs) (laughs) no it's nice i like the way you do you're like i don't mean it like that but But yeah so basically (laughs) what are you trying to say what are you trying to say man (laughs) but yeah um think that's well thank you for having me no problem it's a pleasure we're gonna have to figure out like an intro oh yeah guys we and, like, do an outro yeah i can't wait to like do a little comic thing as well comic thing what's it called pop-up pop, pop. oh the pop-up, pop-up. pop-up. that's it oh yeah oh. that's gonna be and, sick uh, i still haven't sent you a picture of that because i can't find you and i look <sighs> slacking nice. already now on the job <laughs> <laughs> i literally can't find one i'm like oh that, that'll do no no, but yeah, I'm so excited. Episode episode four of In The Group Chat, guys. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you. Soon to be the best podcast, like I keep on saying, yes. in the world. Well, that, that's the outro. Yep. <laughs> that's the outro. <laughs> there we go. Yeah. Peace out. <laughs>